Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Today, I'm going to be talking a bit about local maximums and minimums and kind of the difference between local and then absolute maxes and mins. So throughout this week, I'm going to be going over things related to this. So we're going to go over some different optimization problems, which all kind of come back to these absolute or local max and min values. But today, I just want to kind of kick that off by talking about the difference between a local versus an absolute max maximum or minimum. Uh, these are sometimes also called relative, relative maximum or minimum instead of local. And instead of absolute, you may see it be called global maximums or minimums. Those are all just kind of synonyms for each other. Global and absolute are the same. Local and relative are the same. So let's just kind of talk about the difference between those. So let's say we're looking at a specific x value. Let's just say we have x equals c, where c is just some constant. And we are trying to figure out if x equals c is a local maximum, local minimum, absolute maximum, or absolute minimum. How we can figure that out is by basically just the definition of what those things mean. So this is really the only difference between a local or relative max and min versus a global. So we can see there's a couple different things going on here. Basically, a maximum will occur whenever f of c is greater than all the f of x values that we're comparing it to. So all this really means is if we plug this x value, this c, into our function, we get some output that's bigger than the other outputs of our function. So both of these would be maximums. But really, the kind of difference between an absolute versus a relative is for a relative maximum, we just care about all the x values that are near x equals c. So in other words, that just means that our function is higher when x equals c than the other points basically in that little tiny area around it. And that would make it a local maximum, which makes sense, right? Local maximum is just going to be comparing the points that are in that same area or around it. However, a global maximum is going to occur when our f of c is bigger than all of our other f of x values for all x values within a certain domain. So an absolute max, we're looking at our function on an entire domain. This domain sometimes may be specified as some specific domain, and it may be for all real numbers or all x values. It really kind of depends on you know the, the exact situation you're looking at. But really, the only difference is a local max is just looking at the points really close in that area, where a global max is looking at all x values that we're you know, considering, which may be, like I said, all x values possible. And then a minimum, similarly, is occurs when our function is lower at this c value than it is for all the other x values around it or all the other x values in the entire domain depending on if it's local or global. So if it's local, then this f of c is less than all the other f of x values for all the x's near c. And then if it's a global minimum, our f of c will be less than all other f of x values, no matter what we plug in for x on the entire domain. This upside down a just means for all x. So for all x near x equals c, and for all x that are an element of our domain d. So let's think about what this looks like on a graph. So let's consider the graph of this function here. This green curve is our function f of x. And what we want to think about are all the different local and global maximums and minimums. Of course, there may not be all of those things in every single function, but let's talk about what they kind of look like in this example. So first, when you're thinking about global maxes and mins, it's usually easier to think about the relative or the local ones first because those are going to be, you know, the same kind of points that you're considering for the global max and, and min values. So we can see a couple different points here. I've labeled A, B, and C. So this point A here, let's call this point A and F of A, right? If we take A and plug it into our function F, our output would be F of A. We can see that F of A this point right here 
is lower than all the other points around it, right? If we go either to the right or to the left, we're going to be moving up, right? This point is lower than all those other points. So this would be a local minimum because our f of a is less than all the other f of x values that are around it. If we plug in any other x in this little neighborhood, we're going to get a bigger number than f of a. Similarly, if we look at this point here, which would be b and f of b, this is higher than all the other points on our function around it, right? If we look at f of b, that is greater than all the other f of x values, no matter what x we pick that's near b, and we plug that into our function, these are all going to give us smaller outputs than f of b. So that is a local maximum. And then this is just like down here. This point here is lower than all the other points that we would plug in around it. So f of c is less than all the other f of x values in the area around there. So this is a local minimum. So now if we're thinking about global maximums and minimums, what we want to think about is the, the absolute highest point that's on this function and the absolute lowest point that's on this function. So let's think about the global maximum first. You can see that as our x goes to negative infinity and as our x goes to positive infinity, our function f of x just goes up to infinity. So there's not going to be an absolute maximum on this function because, you know, as we go off to either side, we're just going to keep getting a bigger and bigger point. No matter what value we pick that lies on this function, there's always going to be a bigger one that lies somewhere else on the function. We're never going to be able to get an absolute biggest number on this function. However, we can get an absolute lowest number on this function, right? If we look at f of a, that is less than any other f of x that lies on this function, no matter what we put in for x, because it is the lowest possible output on this function. If we imagine a line, a horizontal line going across at f of a, it doesn't run into our function anywhere else. This is the absolute lowest point. So this would be our global minimum. So the last thing to think about, I did mention that the absolute max and min occur when you have a point that's higher or lower than all the other points on a specific domain. What we frequently see when we're talking about absolute max and min values is it asks for the absolute max and min on a certain domain. So it may say, find you know the absolute max or min just on the domain a and c so we're just looking at the values in between a and c right so from here to here so basically you would want to ignore your function outside of that domain so we can ignore all of this and we're just going to be looking at our function between a and c and now since we have a restricted domain we can see that we're going to we're going to be able to have an absolute max now because this point right here is higher than our function on all other points within this domain so f of b is actually going to be bigger than all other f of x's within the domain a to c so this would be a global max on ac on that domain ac and this would still be our global min or our global minimum because this is still lower than all the other points within this domain so that's really all there is to local versus global maximum and minimum values. Go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon down there so you'll be notified. I'm going to be going over a lot more examples related to this topic throughout the rest of the week. So be sure to check back for more.